Hello everyone, Michael here, and today we're looking at the Redmi Note 11T Pro Plus, a phone with a seriously long name. It is the follow-up phone to the Redmi 11 Pro Plus, which I reviewed just a few months back, and in a flash, the Redmi brand has released its successor with an upgraded chipset, faster charging, and a downgraded display, but it is cheaper. And if we compare the 11T Pro Plus to the standard 11T Pro that was also just released, the only difference between the two is the charging speed, as well as the battery size. Apart from that, everything is pretty much the same. Now, usually the T variant on Android phones is a minor mid-year upgrade, but Redmi have decided to just completely redesign the look of this phone within six months. Certainly the old 11 Pro Plus wasn't the best looking, and for the 11T Pro Plus, they've kept it relatively simple. The depth sensing camera has been removed, allowing for a more simplified camera design, and it does look pretty simple. The silver finish does feel and look a little cheap. Somehow you can see fingerprint marks and smudges even on the silver finish. Now, they have brought the price down by around $50, compared to the previous version and they've done that by saving some money on the display which is no longer a super AMOLED panel but a 1080p LCD with slightly reduced brightness. It's not a bad panel by any means and they've actually bumped up the refresh rate up to 144Hz. It's also slightly smaller at 6.6 .6 inches which makes it way more comfortable and even though it's the same resolution it's actually got a higher pixel density, so you could say, in a way, this is a pretty nice downgrade. One bigger jump compared to its predecessor is the performance. We get a more powerful chipset inside the 11T Pro Plus that runs a Dynasty 8100 instead of the 920 we have in the previous phone, so this is going to give it a decent jump in performance. I maxed out all the settings in Call of Duty and played on full brightness and volume without any problems for a sustained period and didn't get any significant rise in temperature staying at around 37 degrees. PUBG I could play on HDR graphics with the high FPS mode and it kind of fluctuated between 40 and 55 FPS which is fine and Genshin Impact at medium to high settings got between 30 and 40 FPS so for the price it does a pretty good job in the gaming department. The camera department has also been changed somewhat from the previous 11 Pro Plus, with the 11T using a 64 megapixel main sensor instead of a 108 megapixel sensor. We also see the removal of the depth sensor and we still have an 8 megapixel ultra wide, this time with a slightly wider field of view. And the performance, well, it's okay. I put it up against the OnePlus 8T, which is a two-year-old mid-ranger, to see if the 11T could keep up, and on the surface, it can. In a lot of scenarios, it matched the 8T quite well. However, when you really view these photos on a monitor, it does become more apparent that the OnePlus is a lot cleaner thanks to its optical image stabilization, something that the 11T lacks, which is a shame because I think this sensor could produce some great images if it had OIS. This is a normal one-handed shot from the 11T, but if we use two hands and really try and stabilize it, the result looks looks a lot better. The ultrawide is 8 megapixels and produces shots that can certainly match the 8T in terms of quality, although it can take a few attempts to take a decent picture. There is a night mode, which is obviously a lot better than the standard shooting mode at night. You can use both the main and the ultrawide, although much like the 8T, the ultrawide is probably best left for daytime. The main sensor does a good enough job if you're close up to a subject and there is some decent light sources around, but when you drop back and take some shots with larger dark areas, this is where it struggles to keep up with the 8T, but overall I'd be happy with the performance at this price point. 
Now, video is not this phone's strong suit. It can shoot 4K 30fps, but without any kind of stabilization. So I dropped down the quality to 1080p 60fps and didn't actually check the footage after I shot it. I kind of just assumed it would have some kind of stabilization, but it doesn't. So 1080p 30fps is the sweet spot here on the Pro Plus, and if video is important to you, perhaps you should look elsewhere. Now, all of the camera tech on the 11T Pro Plus you get also on the standard 11T Pro, there's no difference, and the same display and the same processor. The only thing that's actually different is the charging speed, which is significantly better on the Pro Plus with 120 watts instead of 67. I got to 47% in 10 minutes, which is a little below Redmi's claim. However, the painful thing about this deal is that you also get a much reduced battery of 4400 milliamps on the Pro Plus instead of 5080 milliamps on the standard 11T Pro, which is a pretty painful pill to swallow. The fingerprint sensor is mounted on the right hand side and sits in a nice and comfortable position for your thumb. There is also the option of 2D face unlock and if you have any Xiaomi wearables, they can also be used for quick unlock. The selfie camera is 16 megapixels and takes decent pictures, although sometimes a little overexposed. This is what the selfie camera looks like on the 11T Pro Plus. It does look a little shaky, but the exposure seems okay, and going up to 60 FPS is a bonus, so there we go. The Pro Plus runs MIUI 13 on top of Android 12. Things look pretty familiar on the Pro Plus. Everything has run pretty smoothly, and animations look especially smooth with that 144Hz refresh and fast loading times. Though we still get this awful control center that looks like a blind person tried to sketch the iOS version. But luckily, you have the option to switch it back to the classic Android style. As for the rest of the phone, we do have an IP58 rating for water resistance, although it is just splash resistant, so I wouldn't recommend jumping into a swimming pool. We also have a headphone jack, a dual SIM card slot, and stereo speakers. So like I said at the start, the Redmi Note 11T Pro Plus is a phone with a very long name, but an even shorter battery life thanks to losing over 600 milliamp hours compared to its little brother. The standard 11T Pro is exactly the same in every way to the Pro Plus, except for battery size and charging, and I would be quite happy to sacrifice the 120 watts charging for a bigger 5000 milliamp hour battery on the standard 11T Pro. Because at the end of the day, the Pro Plus name in this case means the only plus that you'll get is the 120 watts charger in the box and nothing more. My name's Michael and whoever you are should for sure subscribe to the channel and turn on all those lovely notifications so you don't miss a future video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.